In this practical case, we want to build a spectrometer on a small spectral range of 10 nanometer between 585 and 595 nanometer. It should enable at least to resolve the double spectral line of a sodium lamp, which is emitted at 589 and 589.6 nanometer. Therefore, the spectrometer resolution must be better than 0.6 nanometer, that is to say, the spectral distance between the two sodium lines. A resolution of 0.3 nanometer would give some margin and would be preferable. Let's say that we have available in our lab a sodium lamp, a slit, a grating, two parabolic mirrors, and a matrix of detectors. We can make a spectrometer with a slit placed in the front of the source. One of the parabolic mirrors is used off-axis to collimate the beam that will illuminate the grating, and the other parabolic mirror is used to focus the diffracted beam on the detectors. The spectral resolution of the system depends on the spectral resolution of the grating itself, on the slit width, on the pixel size, and on the aberrations of the system. The first thing to do is then to evaluate the grating resolution. We can calculate the resolvance of the grating, which is the ratio between the wavelength and the smallest resolvable wavelength variation with this handy calculation. Diffracted wave divergence and resolvance for reflective grating. The grating is 20 mm by 20 mm, so the maximum beam diameter, which is the uppercase D parameter, is 20 mm. The grating pitch, which is the lowercase d parameter, is 1 micron. The grating is blazed for the first order, which is parameter k, with an incidence angle of 45 degree, parameter i, and at the central wavelength of the considered spectrum, that is to say 590 nanometer, its parameter lam. With this input, the resolvance is 20,000. Therefore, the smallest resolvable wavelength variation is 590 nanometer divided by 20,000, which is around 0.03 nanometer. It's 10 times smaller than the targeted spectral resolution. So the grating is suitable for the present application. Because the slit has a non-zero width, its image on the detector has a non-zero width also that finally induces a spread of the spectral lines on the matrix of pixels. For calculating the theoretical width of the slit image on the detector, we must first calculate the divergence of the beam induced by the slit width after the collimating mirror, then calculate the divergence of this beam after diffraction by the grating, and finally calculate the beam width on the detector matrix. Calculating the beam divergence after the collimating mirror can be done with the handy calculation page image field angle given object field in the front focal plane. This calculation is suitable for any paraxial system. The slit is 50 micron wide, it's the Y parameter, and the collimating mirror has a focal length of 200 mm, it's the FI parameter. The calculated divergence perpendicular to the slit, which is the parameter div, displayed here in the same table that the input, is rounded to 0 0.014 degree. Then, the divergence of the beam after diffraction can be calculated in the page diffracted wave tilt caused by incident wave tilt. With the considered input, including the incident beam divergence that is entered in the incident wave tilt cell, which is parameter di, the calculated divergence of the diffracted beam is rounded to 0 0.01 degrees. We can then go back to the previous calculation page used in the reverse way for obtaining the weeds of the slit image on the detector. 
We know the divergence of the diffracted beam, which is 0.01 degree, parameter div, and the focal length of the focusing mirror, which is 200 millimeter, parameter fi. That gives a field size of 35 microns, parameter y, which is in our case the width of the theoretical image of the slit. Now we need to know to what spectral spread corresponds these 35 micron winds on the detector matrix. The calculation diffraction spot spread caused by spectral dispersion, observation with a lens for reflective grating, enables to calculate the lateral shift of the spot obtained in the focal plane of a lens or of a mirror after diffraction by a grating and for a spectral shift of one nanometer. In our case, we can see that this lateral shift is 200 microns. So, using a rule of three, the 35 microns width of the perfect image of the slit is equivalent to a spectral spread of 0.175 nanometer. Thus, at this stage of the study, the spectrometer resolution is limited by the slit and is 0.175 nanometer. The pixels are 10 micron wide and are therefore 3.5 times smaller than the width of the slit in the image plane. So they are not limiting the spectral resolution. Let now evaluate the impact of the aberration on the spectral resolution. For this, we are using the advanced calculation tool enabling to analyze an optical system. I have previously entered the parameters of the system. Here is a 3D ray tracing with the slit centered on the focal point of the collimating mirror. The grating, which is for the occasion replaced by a flat mirror because the software doesn't manage the gratings. The matrix of pixels is placed in a plane close to the focal plane of the focusing mirror. This layout is given for the central wavelength, which is 590 nanometer. As mentioned above, it is not the real layout. We have replaced the grating by a flat mirror. In the real layout, the grating would have a different orientation, such that the incidence angle is 45 degrees. But this replacement doesn't change the aberrations, considering that both grating and mirror are perfectly flat. Let's calculate now the spot diagrams. Each of these spots correspond to a given height on the slit, supposed to be 2 mm high. The spot size increases with the height. This increase is probably caused by some field curve or some defocus arising because of the non-zero height of the slit. In any case, the geometrical spot size is at maximum around twice the diffraction limit that is to say 30 microns. The most appropriate spot size to consider is in fact the RMS one and not the geometrical one. It is smaller than 21 microns. By adding the RMS spot width to the slit width, we obtain the maximum width on the detector of a perfectly monochromatic beam at 590 nanometer. This maximum width is 56 microns. According to the spectral dispersion calculated before, it limits the spectral resolution to 0.28 nanometer. We have also to evaluate the performance of the optical system across the spectrum. For that, we will evaluate the performance at the minimum and maximum wavelengths of the range. Practically, we just have to rotate or fake flat mirror replacing the grating such that the change in reflection angle equals to the change in diffraction angle corresponding to the considered wavelength. Let's first calculate these changes in diffraction angle. For that, we come back to the handy calculation tool and use the calculation page diffraction angle for reflective grating. The calculated the diffraction angles for the extreme and central wavelengths are presented in the tables. 
we can see that the maximum change in diffraction angle referred to the center wavelengths one is less than 0.3 degree plus or minus 0.3 degrees now we go back to our system in the advanced calculations tool we modify it for simulating the change of diffracted beam angle by plus or minus 0.3 degree we just have to rotate the flat mirror replacing the grating by plus or minus 0.15 degree we can see schematically on this graphic based on the ray tracing at the central wavelengths how the rays at the two extreme wavelengths would propagate after the grating we start with a diffraction angle change of minus 0.3 degree we can see now on the spot diagram some astigmatism in any case the maximum RMS post size is smaller than 38 microns at any eight of the slit the result is slightly identical with an angle change of plus 0.3 degree thus I will not present it by adding the RMS spot size to, to the width of the perfect image of the slit we have the maximum width on the detector of any monochromatic beam in the spectral range this width is 30, 73 microns according to the dispersion of the system which is 200 microns per nanometer a simple rule of three gives finally a spectral resolution of 0.365 nanometer this resolution is acceptable as it is smaller than the spectral distance between the two considered emission lines of a sodium lamp. Thank you for your attention.